Howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing Tools. And welcome back to another one of our fly tying tutorials. Today I'm going to show you a fly that we around here at the shop called the Andros Island Gotcha. Yeah, this is just a variation on a gotcha, but this was basically shown to me a number of years back by Cole McVeigh, whose father actually invented the original gotcha. And to a certain extent, Nick Leiden, one of the premier guides at the Andros Island Bonefish Club, in fact, one of the sons of uh, Rupert Leiden, who started the club. Um, but I've taken the fly and just tweaked it a little bit over the years, changed a couple of materials, and it, it's just a fly that we hear uh, called the Andros Island Gotcha. And it's a must have on our Andros Island trips, which we do a couple of times a year. And then, of course, anybody going to Andros and search a big bonefish. This is this is basically the only fly I fish down on Andros. Um, here we go. Uh, get my click glasses, get them into place. And we're, we're using the Gamakatsu B10S. I'm sure you're already familiar with that hook. If you're not, become very familiar with this hook. Um, I use it on a, a ton of saltwater flies, uh, all my bonefish flies, some redfish stuff. In fact, um, we're just in the process of launching Flip Pallet's new line of flies, both on our website and his. And this is the fly that Flip uses on almost all of his saltwater patterns. So uh, you've heard me say it before, if it's good enough for Flip, it's good enough for, for most of us. I'm using flat wax nylon, color shell pink. Um, also, many of you know that I love to use flat wax nylon. It's just a really great thread and you're going to start your thread I start up behind the eye and I wrap her back down and I go well past the bend okay I go down the bend on this one past the barb and then I'm going to wrap the thread back up and I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch or so behind the eye and then I'm going to trim the tag end of that thread there <clears throat> we're going to run the kind of the tailing material we're going to run it down the bend so it kind of arcs up and when this fly is laying on the bottom it kind of has that shrimpy kind of profile. And we are using mylar cord here for the body and this is the large size pearl. And what I do, I usually, I tie these for the shop so I tie them production. So I tie a dozen or two dozen at a time. So I'll measure out uh, the exact size that I want and I want it to extend off the rear end of the hook I'd say about an inch and then what I do is I double this up because I'm going to I'm going to double it up when I tie it in and then I make my cut you see I'm going to double it double it up like this when I tie it in which makes for a really thick tail uh, a lot thicker than most gotchas and then when I'm doing these for production at home, I'll just cut off, cut a bunch of these sections so I've got them set in the side and ready to go. Of course, you're going to pull the core out of the mylar piping, mylar cord. I'm going to double this up. And then I'm just going to lay it right on top of the hook shank. I kind of fold it over the hook shank. And then I'm going to grab it right at that, again, about a quarter of an inch or so behind the eye of the hook, maybe a little bit more, and I just lash this to the top of the hook shank. Pretty simple. And then, again, you're wrapping down a little bit on the bend of the hook so that tail gives you that shrimpy looking profile. Now I'm going to wrap back up to the tie-in point where I just tied that material in, and now I'm going to put my eye on. For the eyes, I like to use these Spirit River Eyeballs, I-B-A-L-Z. Of course, you can find them on our website, and I use the 532nd size. You can, all, of course, always tie this fly in smaller sizes. I forgot to mention that um, this is a size 2 hook, bigger than most of your typical bonefish flies, but if you've ever fished Andros Island, you know <clears throat> that the bonefish there are bigger than average. Big flies, even when it comes to bonefish, typically catch big fish. So I'm um, installing the eyes on top of the hook, doing your usual figure eight. Then I'm gonna wrap around the entire base of the eye. There's no set way of doing this. You just wanna get it so that it's really solid in place and so that it doesn't rotate. 
And then I'm going to take my trusty Zapagap, put a nice little coating of Zapagap on top of that eye, and then repeat the process again. I'm figurating through those eyeballs, wrap around the base of them, and get it nice and solid in there. Okay. And now we're going to wrap our body, <clears throat> and here I use good old sparkle braid. Um, you've maybe seen me wrap a body with this before. We also use this stuff for uh, tying sucker spawn. I think they call them crystal meth. But I cut a pretty generous piece. Actually, I probably just cut way too much, but I cut a pretty generous piece, and I'm going to run it all the way down the body. And when I first started tying these, I used to tie it in back at the bend and then wrap the body. And Nick Leiden told me once, he said, no, run it along the body. It just creates a bulkier looking body. So tie that in, and I've run it the entire length of the body. And then now you can bring your thread up in front of the um, lead eyes. Now I'm going to use the sparkle braid, and I'm simply going to wrap, I'm going to spiral right up the body here. You're going to come right behind the eyes, and then I'm going to go in front and behind, and in front and behind the other direction, so I kind of figure eight it over the eyes, and then you're going to tie that off right in front of those eyeballs. Okay. Now when I'm tying these production, what I'll do is I'll tie this off. I'll put a whip finish here, and... <clears throat> I take my scissor points and I come in on that mylar piping or that mylar tubing and I kind of splay it out so your tail is ready to go. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use some of the uh, Loon UV clear finish or whatever your favorite UV is and I'm going to put a nice hard candy shell on, on the back. Uh, this does a couple of things. First of all, it adds durability. If this fly gets banged up on some coral or after I've caught a couple of fish, it keeps that sparkle braid from fraying or coming undone, getting torn and coming undone. It also helps me to kind of seal everything in around the, the eyes there and prevents that fly from twisting after you've fished it or caught a couple of fish. Um, and then it also is adding a little bit of weight and it's going to help it sink faster. And then I'm going to use my UV light and cure that up. And like I said, it just puts a nice hard candy shell along the back of that fly. Okay. I have no idea how to turn that light off. Uh, so, so what I'll do then is I'll, I'll take this and set it aside and I'll do up 12 or 24, however I'm in time that night. So I'll just do up what I call the blanks and then I'll come in later and I'll put the wing on these. And for the wing, one of the difference, uh, a lot of people use craft fur. Uh, there's a variety of different things that people use. I've gone to using the Arctic Fox. I, I love this stuff. Uh, looks incredible in the water, creates a really great profile. And when I'm tying the white version with the white sparkle braid for the body, I'm going to use the white Arctic Fox. And you just, just get yourself a hunk of that. I would say maybe about a quarter, a quarter of the diameter of a pencil, something like that, <clears throat> down here at the base. And I'm going to trim it off using my heavy synthetic scissors. I'm going to kind of measure this. And you want it to be not quite as long as the tail. I want the tail to kind of stick out a little bit further. We were just editing this video and realized I made a horrible, horrible mistake. The wing on this fly should actually be slightly longer than the tail. In the video, I said the tail should be longer than the fly. I apologize, I misspoke. Make the wing slightly longer than the tail, and that gives it a really, really nice taper when it's in the water. So I, I restart my thread right there. If you're just tying a couple of these, and you don't want to tie it off, and you want to finish the fly, that's fine. Your thread would have been started there. Um, you just do your UV. And, and then I'm going to lay this in place. I'm going to 
tie that wing in right in front of the eye. And now you're on the underside of the hook shank. And I tie my wing in and pretty thick. A lot of gotchas you see in fly shops that are really sparse. And these big bone fish, especially on the west side of Andrus, they, they're, they're looking for a meal. And now I'm going to top it with a little bit of, of crystal flash in the pearl color. I usually go about four strands of the crystal flash. I'm going to make this just slightly longer than the wing. And I should have my thread. My thread should be just right in front of the eyes. Okay, I'm going to wrap forward to the eye of the hook, and then I'm going to fold this, the, the remaining backwards, and then I'm going to rack back to the, just in front of the eyes. And I come and trim just about even with the other strands, and my thread is now hanging right in front of the eyes. That's pretty much it, friends. I'm going to finish this fly, and I, I do two finishes. The first one is a little bit of zappa gap right on top there and i want that zappa gap to get back into the wing and then i kind of get it down onto the eyes a little bit it kind of glues everything it glues that wing in place a little bit better prevents it from pulling out um, and kind of locks everything into the eyes and keeps this fly from rotating and then here's a cool trick you've probably seen me do this before but i don't even bother finishing with that big dollop of zap a gap on there i go one turn two turn and i'm just going to hold it in place for a second that zap a gap is going to be all i need to hold that thread in place and i may come in with the butt of my scissors and just hold that tag in down for a second and the zap a gap grabs it there's no real need for you to tie a knot here the zap a gap will do it for you and then my last step is I come in and put that nice candy coating of the UV finish and I coat the entire head making sure again to kind of tie everything in with the eyes. Get all the way around so you get that nice hard candy coating. It keeps the head from getting banged up. This is the white version that I use most often. Uh, I get a lot of people, uh, we sell almost equal amounts between the white and what we call the tan. And the tan, the only variation that I do is I change to, I think it's called peach color on the sparkle braid. You can actually use orange. And then instead of white, I use the tan Arctic Fox, okay? Uh, by the way, the Arctic Fox that I love to use comes from Pro Sport Fisher. If you can get your hands on this pro sport fisher, of course you can find it at madriveroutfitters.com. The problem is it's really hard to get. Um, I, I'd say about 50% of the time it's, it's not in stock. So keep your eyes on our website. It'll tell you whether it's in stock or not. But this, the Arctic Fox from Pro Sport Fisher, which I believe is imported from Sweden, this stuff is far superior. But if not, the, um, the Arctic Fox from Hairline Dublin will work just fine. Um, so I switched to the tan for the wing, and that gives me the, uh, the tan color. One little variation that I, I've been doing, I haven't been doing this on the production flies, but I've been doing it on some of my personal and then some of my friends that have been fishing down there that always buy these flies from me. I've been using some of the Senyos, I think it's called Predator Flash, and it's kind of a, a grizzly looking uh, just a little bit of a flash material, kind of similar to crystal flash, but uh, a, a little bit different. And I just cut a little bit of hank of that and put it right along with the crystal flash in there. And uh, I don't know, it just kind of looks like the mud vein in a shrimp or uh, just kind of adds a little bugginess. So that's just a slight variation that I've been doing with this barred predator flash from uh, Greg Senyo and Hairline Dubbin. So, <clears throat> There you have it, the uh, Andros Island Gotcha, size two on the Gamakatsu B10S. Um, if, if you run into guides or other anglers that tell you this fly is too big, well then they're probably catching small bonefish. 
So as always, appreciate you watching. Uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have years and years and years of content coming at you. Thanks for watching.